Hello, my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my worst books of 2019. So I wasn't going to film this video right now because I thought I'd left it a bit late with the lighting and I've now decided I'm in my big hoodie, I've got a coffee, it's just like a cosy night in rather than a professionally filmed video, like any of my videos are professionally filmed, so never mind about that. Um, but I'm just going to run you through my 10, maybe 9 nine <laughs> um, least favourite books of 2019. So I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to say it because if I don't, somebody will just go mental, that these are my least favourite books. That does not mean that they are bad books. It means that I personally didn't get on with them. And if I hate them, you're still allowed to love them, just like the other way around. That's dealt with. Let's carry on. Um, so I have no physical copies of these books because I do not hold on to books that I don't like. A lot of these were also audiobooks, so I never had a copy. The first one being We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Major. I still haven't learnt how you say her name. So this is about the Medio School for Girls, which trains women to either become a Primera or a Segunda. And I can't remember which way around it is, but one of the women, they will both marry off into a household, like they will be bought for the normally like the oldest son or whatever. Um, and so he will get one of each. One of them will be, the Primera will be the like political, um, to go with him to political events and talk about intellectual things. And the Segunda will be the child bearer and the provider of services like that. Yeah, I don't wanna say on YouTube. <laughs> um, so yeah, they will both be sent off to live with this man. And Daniela is the highest rated Primera of the year and she gets paired up with, I've completely forgot her name, a girl that she doesn't really speak to and she's forced to go and live in this household. Um, but her, Daniela's background is starting to show through and it's all a lie. I really didn't like this book. I read it not long after I read Girls With Sharp Sticks, which was one of my favorite books of the year. And it just felt so similar in terms of what it was about um, and like why these girls were going out, which it is a completely different book. It's a completely different premise, but it just had too many similarities for me. And then I was listening to the audiobook and I actually found it a struggle to want to listen, which normally is not the case for me. Like I always want to listen to an audiobook at work and I really didn't want to. So... I actually gave this book one star. I'm pretty sure all these books are one or two stars. So I was like, mm, not really my cup of tea. The next book is The Creeper Man by Dawn Kurtigich. So I read this in the reading rush actually in July, was it? Um, and this is about Scylla and her little sister Nori who run away from their abusive household to live with their Aunt Kath in Aunt Kath's country mansion. Um, but then Aunt Kath locks herself away in the attic and the forest is creeping nearer and nearer every day. Um, this had such good promise. I was really excited. I um, it, it was formatted strangely. So like there'd be chunks of words missing and black pages and all stuff like that. And I thought this is gonna be really, really interesting. And it just wasn't. I still read it in a day because I was on holiday. It was the reading rush. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't scary, which I thought it was supposed to be at least creepy. Um, it just didn't really do anything for me, sadly. Um, I've seen another book advertised by her. I can't remember what it's called at all. Maybe I'll put a little note in because I've just completely forgotten that I was tempted to try and I don't know whether it was the Creeper Man itself or their writing. So we will see, I guess. The next book is Stephen King. It's Gerald's Game. I wanted to read this so that I could go and watch the Netflix film and not feel like I was cheating. So this is about a husband and wife who decide to, the husband decides to handcuff the wife to the bed and then it all goes horribly wrong because the husband dies and she is stuck handcuffed to the bed in a like little country home in the middle of nowhere. I really wanted to enjoy this. It's the first Stephen King book that I've actually sat and read. I still have it on my shelves and I'm far too daunted, but I really, really, really wanted to love it and I just couldn't. It was another one I read on holiday. I finished it off in two days and then I left it in the hotel, like reception, for somebody else to enjoy. It was gone pretty quickly. 
just not really my cup of tea and I'm hoping it was that story and not Stephen King's writing because it is a monster book and I really really want to try and read it. Um, next is People Like Us by Dana Mele. So this is about a girl called Kay who goes to a prestigious boarding school and she is effortly eff and she is effortless effort and she is effortlessly I can't say the word effortlessly popular. Um, then a girl's body is found in the lake and she's sent on a computer scavenger hunt to try and find out what's gone on. Um, sounds interesting. I was really excited about reading it. I only read this very recently and it was so boring. Like, I still don't know what happened. I can't remember anything about it. It went completely just straight over my head. I couldn't even tell you any of the characters' names. I had to research what she was called and I read it last month. Like it was, it just didn't engage me at all. And I'm sure that other people must have loved this book, but it just, it wasn't my thing. Um, next is Breaking Him by R.K. Lily, which I thought was gonna be one of my reads of the year that was just absolute filth. And it was good because it was so bad, but this was just bad. So this is about 28 year old Scarlett, who is an air hostess. And she is, she's on a, the plane at working and her ex-boyfriend Dante just happens to be sat there. Like he has stalked her onto this plane and she has to like serve him. And then she decides she's gonna play him at his own game and she's going to break him. Like he broke her. It's awful. Like I'm, this is the one where I'm like, I'm sorry, but it, it is just bad. So the whole idea of the story is that he mistreated her in the past so she decides that she's gonna sleep with him she's gonna lead him on and then she's just gonna say no basically but it just it was just so bad i just would not recommend this to anybody i don't think there were any redeeming qualities about it and yeah just just no next is finale by becca fitzpatrick so i wasn't trying to include any furthers on in the sequels of any books like I was just going for first in a series if that was bad but I could not leave finale off this list so this is the fourth and final book in the hush hush series which I absolutely adore the first book is amazing and it just slowly goes downhill until we get to finale so this is about a girl called Nora who just seemed everything seems to be going wrong for her she seems to be in a lot of danger all the time and bad mysterious boy patch seems to be in the center of all of them and that's all i really want to say about the first book there's fallen angels and things like that it's paranormal but the fourth book i was expecting some sort of massive like revelation of how all of the books link together how everything made sense there's i can't again i don't want to spoil anything there's a life and death situation that we've been told for four books is a life and death situation and our main character just treats it like she's deciding whether she wants i don't know a latte or a cappuccino like she's not fussed at all and then she is fussed in one scene and then she isn't fussed in another scene and then she is fussed in another scene and i couldn't stand it it was just so bad just because it was like everything that happened over the four books was then just backtracked and oh yeah there's another reason for this and oh we don't care but oh we do care again no i wanted a nice well it's called finale i wanted a nice finale to the series and i didn't get it and i will always be angry about it next is falling through clouds by anna chilvers this is about a girl called cat i believe she's like 22 23 something like that who meets a guy called gavin on the train and she decides to run away from her dad and his friend who she's on the train with to go and spend the summer with Gavin in Cornwall just spontaneously as everyone obviously does. Um, it turns out that Gavin was in Iraq and he was held prisoner in Iraq and he's got some issues left over from that and by the time Kat finds out it's all a bit too late. So this book it it had promise. I read it very quickly. I did enjoy it as I was reading it um, until we started getting like I got bored very quickly. The first couple of chapters I was in, I was involved, I wanted to know what was going on and then it just slowly lost me and slowly lost me until I could not wait to put this book down. So this was definitely not one of the worst in this list, but it was not great 
in any sense of the word. Next is a very controversial one, and that is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I did not like this book at all. So this is about, um, mainly about Francis and Alid, who are, they form a completely platonic friendship, which was nice to see in a contemporary. But my main reason for reading contemporaries is like a bit of a hard hitting story and a romance in it. So the fact that there wasn't that, that knocked it down a bit for me because that's just what I like to read is what I expect from contemporaries. Um, and basically Francis and Alid are struggling with moving on to university, what their parents expect them to do, what they want to do, all of the typical YA, that age questions really. But there was a platonic friendship in it, which is just not my cup of tea. Like I wanted something to happen and it wasn't gonna happen. And we kept being told at the start of the book it wasn't gonna happen. And yeah, I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy, um, obviously there's a lot more in this story. Um, I think, I don't even wanna go into it because I don't wanna get them confused. I also read I Was Born For This like, and I didn't give that much higher of a rating, um, but I don't wanna jumble the stories together. Either way, there is a bit more, but it just didn't impress me in any way. And finally, we have If I Stay by Gail Foreman. Um, I think a lot of these books I actually read in the Owls in April, whenever it was. So this just wasn't, that wasn't a good month for me. Um, this is about Mia who goes on a drive with her family. It's a very, very short book. Um, they are in a car accident. She wakes up, but she is not in her body. She is watching her body and she has to follow her body to try and figure out what's going on. Um, and that that's pretty much all I can even remember about it. I didn't enjoy it. It was supposed to be emotional and heart hitting, like she's trying to find out if she's alive or dead. And I didn't care. Um, I normally sob at things like that. I get far too involved and I just wasn't, wasn't bothered. It didn't get me at all. And I think in those sorts of books, they are trying to push all your buttons and make you cry. So if it's not worked, it just wasn't great. Well, those are the nine books that were my least favourite in 2019. If you've read any of these books, have the same opinion, a completely different opinion, please let me know in the comments because I'd really like to talk about them and just find out what everyone else thinks about these books. So thank you for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.